What's up guys, it's Ryan Bossery from Rywire and today we are at Wisecraft and I wanted to show you the progress on the S2000. So here she is. As you guys could see, the uh, Tesla motor is mounted. So what Chris ended up having to do here is basically re recreate an entire lower control arm. And the reason for that is because we extended the rear subframe, probably about, what was it, like five inches? So eight inches total from pretty much here all the way back. That whole section is like a remade tube. And as you can see here, there's a boxed in mount for our side mount. This is the motor side of the motor drive unit. Uh, we still have a couple little things that we have to address. Like we're just gonna put a um, spherical heim joint right here. And then we're gonna do a lower, lower arm mount. That'll be all done today. You can see the lower arm that Chris did. We basically had to dog leg it. So this is kind of a factory path. And then what normally would happen here is this would go straight. And what we ended up having to do is to go and dog leg about eight inches back and then a heim joint that direction. So that's kind of the uh, process that Chris took to get this done. You can see there's a little boxed in plate right there for strength. And to tie the two on, together on the bottom, we ended up using this metal plate. And this was Chris's idea. It's pretty cool because this also can act as a skid plate. And to be honest, we thought that this was gonna sit um, a hell of a lot lower. And there's actually a good amount of ground clearance. Like something that we were talking about kind of early on, right? That, you know, it, it was, we were thinking it was gonna hang really, really low, but we ended up kind of stuffing it in pretty well. As you can see here, that's this is that rear mount. We were talking about this on the other video. Um, we were talking about like just getting that started and that's it pretty much done there. And here's our lower arm on the other side. And here's where the uh, power cables would go in for the plus and minus on the drive unit. Just to get an idea of what we're looking at. Let's see if we can see what's going on right here. If the camera will adjust, there's our front mount right there. And then we have these brakes here. So basically they will, bolts, hardware is through this way. Hardware would come out and then you'd be able to basically take this entire piece out with the motor. All right guys, so we tested my brake uh, master cylinder booster setup and we have to build an adapter plate for that. So at least we know uh, what we need to do. And then let me just kind of show you guys what the car is currently looking like. We got a long ways to go, but we just need to get some batteries done and then we are headed to paint. What's going on guys? Ryan Bossery from Rywire. And today we are at Imer Engineering. We are checking on the S2000. Um, Chris basically fulfilled his obligation with getting the electric motor, the Tesla drive unit installed in the S2000. Uh, Chris got super busy um, with, backed up with clients and I was like, you know what, the motor's done. How about I bring it over to the other Chris at Imer Engineering and try to wrap up some of the batteries um, and a little bit of stuff on the engine bay. So let me show you guys exactly what Chris Imer's doing and um, let's get to it. All right guys, so check out the electric motor is installed. Chris Vong at Wisecraft did a wonderful job of that. I'm really happy that it's all finalized and I don't really have to think too much about that right now. The next thing that we're gonna be doing at Chris Imer's is going to be mounting the battery system all throughout the car and also tackling some of the engine bay, um, like kind of getting rid of some of the holes basically just so the body shop doesn't have to do all the work. Um, what we're looking at here is this is the old like gas tank bulge essentially where the gas tank would live underneath here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this entire section out and then we're just gonna have a battery tray inlaid into the back of the car. And on the engine bay side, we are going to fit some batteries here in the front of the beam. Then we're gonna have some batteries live in the actual engine bay. So there's gonna be a couple two 20 inch guys here. There's gonna be a 17 inch behind that and then another 17 inch underneath there. So it's gonna be 
pretty congested, but I'm trying to keep it as clean as humanly possible. Um, car still has a ways to go. And let's see, I think you guys could see here, I just started kind of making some X's on the engine bay. So there's gonna be all the, all the holes that we're not using, all the big holes, we're just gonna fill. So that's just kind of an overview of what we got going on at Imer Engineering. Um, he's gonna be knocking out this stuff pretty quick. Uh, timeline is getting really tight for the build, but um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of an update and just to show you that we are working on the batteries. All right guys, so this is the battery tray and Chris is gonna pull it out real quick. So for the rear, we're gonna have two batteries in that tray he just pulled out, two big ass batteries, and he just reinforced the chassis to accept that battery tray. So that's pretty much where we're at with the rear. You wanna just drop it back in real quick and then they can see how it like. Yep, it's gotta be heavy so those batteries are super heavy and that's our tray all right guys so let's do a little walkthrough with pretty much everything that we have going on here at Imer engineering so this is the motor on the cradle we had to pop it out because Chris was making the uh, rear batteries but let's have a quick look so if we could see what the other Chris from wisecraft did uh, you can see the skid plate that's incorporated with the mounting brace between the front and the rear part of the subframe. You can also tell that our subframe was actually widened 8 inches, stretched back to accommodate this giant Tesla motor drive unit. And then you can see the lower arms were custom offset. So basically we have kind of factory pivoting points, factory shock point, and then we have the lower dog arm that goes about eight inches further back and then bolts to the factory but moved rear subframe. And then you can see that we have our links in place for our sway bar, so that's cool. I still get a sway bar out of this. In the back, you can see the rear attachment bar that's basically strength and structure for the rear brace. That's our rear motor mount right there. And of course there's the top tube brace and then the mount bracket that Chris did. And let's see, same thing on this side, lower arm, just a different view. Factory upper arm, factory shock for now. We got some Olin shocks going in. And let's see what else in the front. So this is basically closest to the driver, if you will. So this is the front of the car on the rear subframe. So here you can see the bar goes tying across for strength. You can see that Chris triangulated it up to the top of the rear subframe. This bar, there, this whole subframe might look a little odd if you guys aren't really familiar with S2000s. And there is a disconnect here. So if we're servicing this motor, we can actually pop these out and then this whole piece can drop probably wouldn't even take it off that mount I would just drop it down disconnect it and that's pretty much the drive unit and all the wisecraft fabrication that was done and then let's have a look at the S oh look at Chris Eimer has turn 14 distribution written right there across his tool plate his toolbox and then, okay, here's my battery tray, but let's go back to that in a second. So let's take a look under. As you guys can see, our 
rear subframes out because it's sitting right behind me. And these are our battery trays. And there's holes cut out just for some uh, weight savings there. And then we're gonna have some trays bolted on top. And then the old like rear storage drop section where the tools go in the S2000 is all cut out. So you can see that part of it's like just completely removed. So we have two giant holes basically in the back of this S after we're gonna be all said and done here. So you can see that the trays in front. Chris is uh, Chris Eimer is finishing up this welding right now. It's gonna end up looking kind of like that finished edge. I'm not too concerned about it being like really perfect back here. Like this car's gonna have full interior. I'm gonna just hit it with some paint to touch it up so it doesn't rust and kind of call it a day to be honest. I'm not gonna, not gonna uh, cry over that kind of stuff at all. This is this car is gonna be street street driven. So, all right, there's the interior, and then let's go have a look at the front. Whoa, get around some stuff. All right, for the front, if you could see here, we actually. We actually cut this, this support out that would normally connect for our hood latch and we just cut it all away. And then this is gonna be the beginnings of our new battery tray. It's kind of hard to see, but just see that there's a kind of a U-shaped structure here. We're gonna have a front battery tray. This is literally in front um, where I guess the factory radiator would have lived. And we're gonna still keep the air conditioning condenser right here so I'm gonna have an air conditioning condenser and then we're gonna be able to just tightly get this battery in between this support beam and then what we haven't done yet is battery boxes for uh, the rest of them essentially which is gonna be in the engine bay and then into the exhaust tunnel all right so that's pretty much it for today um, I'm gonna get back to work at the shop and I'm gonna let Chris Eimer do his thing and wrap up the boxes so hopefully in a few days I'll be back and we'll be able to get a little bit more of an update. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.